G'day and welcome back to the channel. A bit of an update on the CIA situation. As regular viewers know, CIA are investigating me for three, no, four videos now. Four videos that um, have been complained to about, uh, they've had complaints against them, against those videos. So there were three videos initially, which are handled by the first investigator. I was told 11 weeks ago that this investigation should take about a week. So CIA set the expectation. I, I didn't, they said to me, it should take about a week to do this investigation. It is now an order of magnitude longer than that, over 10 weeks, and I still don't have the results of that investigation, right? So what I've learned from this is if CAA tells you something, you can't believe it. You can't automatically believe it. When in doing this, they destroyed the credibility they had. Normally when someone tells me something, I give them the benefit of the doubt. I take things at face value and I believe them, unless there's reason to believe otherwise. I believed CAA when they told me it'd take about a week. It's now in the 11th week, so it's only reasonable that I now treat everything that they tell me with a degree of skepticism. Now, subsequent to that, I also got a call from someone from CAA who said, oh, our, our investigator, the first investigator, is getting hate mail and is being abused online by people who've watched your videos. Can you, you know, can you do something about this? And I said, that's unacceptable. I don't condone that sort of behavior. I'll do a video. So I did a video in which I said to people, do not contact the investigator directly. Be civil, be polite, be respectful at all times, but just don't contact the investigator. It's not helping our cause at all. And it all stopped. Great, fantastic. Right, so the, the weeks have dragged on. A second investigation was started because another video was reported and I did a follow-up video saying that I wasn't at all happy with the attitude of the investigator and I did a, a video where I flew in my backyard with my little tiny drone to show not only are the rules very much outdated but the attitude of the investigator in this case was totally unacceptable with his assertion, his baseless assertion that anything that is non-compliant is a threat to aviation. So CAA obviously have been subjected to some ridicule as a result of that and, and the credibility of that investigator is obviously under challenge. And as I say, last night, I got a phone call at 7.30 from the same guy that called me about the problems with the uh, hate mails to the first investigator. And he said, look, this investigator, the second one, he's been getting death threats by email. Death threats. I said, what the hell? Seriously, that's, that's unacceptable, totally unacceptable, I said. But then I thought for a moment, hang on a minute, can I believe what CAA are saying? They have lied to me in the past. Um, so I said, well, okay, just look, can you send me some copies of these emails? I'd like to see for myself what's going on. No, we can't do that. Hang on a minute. Why can't you do that? Privacy. Privacy. We can't, you know, privacy laws prohibit us from passing that correspondence on. Just redact the sender's email address. So then you've protected their privacy. And all I get to see is the message, this death threats that, I, that you're talking about. No, we can't do that. I said, why not? Because I'm a related party. Oh, no, you're not a related party. Yes, I am, because you're ringing me to try and get this to stop, right? Yes. So just send me the emails. No, we can't do that. At this stage, you're probably thinking the same thing I'm thinking. They could prove their case by just sending the emails. They won't send the emails. Why not? One can only draw a single conclusion from that, that CAA is not being totally honest again. Again, if they were honest, they'd just bung me the emails. I'd have a look at them and we'd do something about it. And they said, look, we want this to stop. Our investigator is under tremendous stress because of all this hate mail and these death threats. He's under stress. It's not fair on him. At which point I said, well, what about me? I've been under stress, under this cloud of suspicion for over 10 weeks. Where's your empathy with me? What about what it's doing to me? And also, when I raise this issue with your investigators, that your investigation system appears to be weaponized as a tool for certain Karens to get at me, you weren't at all concerned about my stress levels. Where's your empathy? You're asking me to be empathetic towards this investigator, but you have no empathy towards me. Is that fairly fair and reasonable? Oh, we want you to take down the videos where you mention this guy's name. And when I made those videos, I was very, very careful not to mention his full name or give his email address or anything else. I just called him by his Christian name. Which again makes me wonder, have people really done research, sort of found out who the guy is, is his full name, and then found out his email address and then sent him these death threats. Really seriously, are people going to do that? Maybe they are, I don't know. But CAA have not proven to me this has happened at all. They expect me to believe them after lying to me in the past. No, I'm sorry, but bold claims require bold evidence and you have refused to give me any evidence. I think my honest opinion is that 
you're trying to get me to take down the videos that are embarrassing you and also causing you a hell of a lot of work because I said to you, I said to your investigators, look, why don't you simply take a quick look at the videos that are reported and if there's no indication that any property or person has been threatened by these videos, then dismiss the complaint because it's not really relevant. And the response was, we have to investigate every complaint. That's the policy. That's the policy. Every complaint must be investigated. So I guess what's happening is they've learned that that policy doesn't always serve them well because in the last week they've probably got 10 weeks or 10 years worth of complaints arriving on their servers because people all around the world have been complaining about my little flight. And if their policy states every complaint must be investigated, probably explains why I got to call at 7.30 at night when they usually knock off at 5. I suspect the workload at CA is very, very heavy because they're piggy-headedly sticking to their policy. The policy that was supposed to, uh, you know, I don't know what, but now it's not serving them very well. What do they do? Do they say, well, we're going to retire that policy or make an exception to that policy so we don't have to spend all that time investigating all those damn complaints, which are all baseless, but a technical infringement, a technical lack of compliance, we, you know, we, we ha we'll set that aside, we won't use that policy, in which case they can use the same you know, uh, setting aside of policy to stop annoying me with frivolous complaints made by people who have a bee in their bonnet about me. It works both ways. If you want to make that policy ironclad, un immutable, then you live by it. If you want to be sensible and say, well, sometimes we shouldn't have to investigate every complaint because some of them are groundless, then use that. And when people send in complaints about things I'm doing which are totally safe, just ignore them. Just tell them I'm sorry, but there's, there's nothing to be seen here, move along. You can't have it both ways. And I suspect that at the moment, CIA is feeling a lot of pain, but it's pain brought on by themselves. It is pain. I offered to meet with people and let's talk about this and get it all sorted. Dead silence. No. And I think the problem is that CIA is now in, in uncharted territory for them. They've probably never encountered anybody like me who basically has nothing to lose. I've had a lot of communications with GA pilots. A lot of people have contacted me in the last few days saying, these are people, pilots of real aeroplanes. A lot of them have their own aircraft. They have a lot of money invested in aircraft. They have, you know, this is their pastime. This is their leisure. This is their joy in life. They can't afford to go head to head with CAA like I can because they know that that could cost them their pilot's license. Now, CAA has recently been reviewed by the government and found to have a culture of bullying. <laughs> and so, this, the high heads have rolled within the organisation, but to be honest, I don't think anything has changed. If what these pilots have told me is correct, the culture of bullying is still powerful within CAA. We've got people who have been given power over others, and they see no point in having power if you don't abuse it. That's, what, that's the feeling, that's my honest opinion. Some people in CAA have that attitude, and I think at least one of the investigators I spoke to has that attitude. And it's unacceptable. I don't give a damn if he's stressed out. And this, this is not my problem. If CAA has no empathy for my position or the position of other pilots and businesses that have been decimated through the culture of CAA, why would I give a damn that an investigator can't handle the stress? If there are death threats, I do not condone that. If there is hate mail, I do not condone that. But just Where's the evidence? It's not too much to ask. It really isn't. And if you don't provide the evidence, you cannot blame me for not believing the claims you make. It's as simple as that. Simple as that. If I made bold claims, CA would want me to produce evidence. It's just fair enough that, that when the tables are turned, they do the same. So that's where we're at. Um, CA want me to take down that video. And I said to them, no, I'm not taking it down. And they were quite taken aback. I, you know, I said, no, I'm not going to take those videos down. They document this process. I'm the subject of complaints. And I don't think CIA has performed very well. And it's important that everybody gets to see what happens all along this process so that if they're the subject of complaints, they know what to expect. And the response was, well, I think we know what kind of person you are then. Yeah, that was pretty much what he said. That's it may not be word for word, but that was basically what was said. The implication was, if you don't do what we ask you to, then we're going to treat you as a hostile party, as someone who needs to be dealt with. I mean, there was this implied threat in what he said, and that's not acceptable. That's bullying. That is bullying. And that is the very thing that CAA has just got their ass kicked for doing. And they're still doing it. To me, and if what other people are telling me is correct, to others. Not acceptable at all. And as I say, this is uncharted territory for CAA. Most of the time when they get their knives into someone, that person just rolls over and plays dead because it's, it's dangerous to do otherwise. You can lose 
the, the right to enjoy your hobby. Me, Parkinson's has taken care of that for me. I'm, I, there's a lot of days that I cannot fly now. My, it's getting worse. I don't, I, I don't say a hell of a lot about it. And on the bad days, I just, you know, roll with the punches. On the good days, I make videos and I get out there and do stuff, but I haven't flown a lot for a long time. So I really cherish the opportunity to grab my little tiny little drone and go down the park and fly safely under the trees, well away from people and airplanes. But CAA don't see it that way. They, you know, I've got nothing to lose because if I'm going to be compliant, I don't fly anymore. But I want to fly because I know it's safe. And there you go. So they can't hold this, they haven't got this big sword over my head saying, do what we say or else, because what are they going to do? What are they going to do? They can't do any more than Parkinson's is doing. So I'm in a privileged position of being able to stand up to these bullies and say, no, I'm not going to take my videos down. And you will not blackmail me by trying to make me feel guilty that some poor investigator can't handle the stress. We'll get over it. You know, we've got enough snowflakes in the aviation industry. And if you really do have the evidence, give it to me. If you don't, then stop complaining. Stop complaining to me. I have no empathy for CAA anymore. You're dishonest and really you're bullies. It's, I have to say it. That's it. No one else will because they, they run too much risk. I don't run any risk at all. Nothing. What are they going to do? Are they going to ban me from flying model airplanes? Yeah, that's going to work. And even if they do, my days are pretty much over anyway. So I've lost nothing. So that's where we're up to with this. I'm standing strong and I'm glad to see that not only the, and it really surprised me, it's not just the model flying community that rallied behind this, but the general aviation community, the pilots out there, um, they are as annoyed by what they're facing as I am. And so I think it's time, I've already emailed the Minister of Transport, the Associate Minister and the Shadow Minister of Transport. It's time the politicians are brought into play here because it's an election year. This year, we've got an election in a few weeks or a few months out. The only time politicians listen are when they're begging for your vote. So if this needs to be made into a huge issue before the election, it will be made into a huge issue before the election. And CAA, all you had to do was do the investigation in a week or so, publish the report, send it to me. This would not be happening. Wouldn't be happening. If you didn't set unreasonable expectations, this would not be happening. Also, it's just, I'm not, I'm not totally heartless. I'll tell you what else happened in this conversation last night. Now, after this conversation had transpired, I said to the guy that rang me, look, can you please summarise this in an email, send it to me, um, so I've got a record of what's going on. Because I was pretty tired, I'd just woken up from having gotten the first sleep in a long time, and I wanted to make sure that I had a really good record of what happened. And he said, no. Why not? Because you might quote us on something. And I'm thinking, well, why would you say things that you wouldn't want to be quoted on? And why are you calling me from your cell phone at 7.30 in the evening? It all sounds a bit dodgy. This is a, if you're doing something you don't want people to know about, this is exactly how you do it. <laughs> uh, and bullying is something you don't want people to know about, right? You, do, you, you try and cover that. So the, all the things point to that up. In my opinion, in my opinion, this is, you know, a little underhand. Anyway, I said, um, well, look, I tell you what, if you put in confidence on the top of the email, I give you my personal promise that I will not disclose anything in that email. Uh, you know, I mean, I'm a journalist. I've been, I've been bound by confidentiality so many times and I treat it very important. I'm a principled guy. Everyone knows I'm a principled guy. If I promise not to say something to anybody or to give you, uh, to accept something in confidence, it stays in confidence. That's how I work. That's the principles are powerful things and I live by them. So if he'd sent me the email with in confidence, we wouldn't have this video because I would be bound by the acceptance of confidence not to tell anybody about it. But he wouldn't do that. So I'm telling you what happened. It's These people, it beggars belief. Um, and I'm sure that there'll be complaints about me disclosing all this, but you could have said, we don't want you to disclose it. Here's the summary in confidence. And I would have been muffled. I would have been, you know, I'd agree to that. So I would have been... Um, gagged. I couldn't have said a thing, but no. And finally, I said, what's happened about my investigation anyway? Come on, seriously, it's, it's the 11th week of a one-week investigation. And he said, I don't know, because everybody in CAA says, I don't know. I don't talk to those people. And it's like in isolation, um, everyone must sit in these little hermetically sealed vessels and not even look sideways at other people in CAA because nobody knows what anyone else is doing. The second investigator knew nothing about the first investigations. And um, this guy knows nothing about the status of my investigation, even though he's ringing me and asking me for favours. Um, so he said, but I'll find out tomorrow and I'll give you a ring in the morning. Okay. Um, as I'm making this, let me get my phone. Let me, well, you probably, I don't know if you, no, you can't see on that, can you see on that computer screen? It says 1410 on that computer screen, just in case you can't see that because I can't tell on the monitor. Well, my, my phone on my computer is a bit out of date. It's 1415 on there. 
quarter past two in the afternoon. I think my phone is a bit out of time. Um, quarter past two in the afternoon. I haven't had a phone call. As far as I'm aware, morning has been and gone and the promised phone call has not arrived. Just like the report that was promised for about a week hasn't arrived 11 weeks later. And see how they're saying death threats. Honestly, believe us, no evidence, but honestly, believe us, take down the video so that our poor investigator isn't under too much stress. And we don't care that you're under immense stress because you're being victimized by our system and you're under immense stress because we can't honor our commitments to finish something in a time frame that we've set. We don't care about your mental stress. No, and the fact that you've got Parkinson's which predisposes you towards anxiety and you haven't slept for bloody weeks. We don't care about your level of stress, but please think of the poor investigator who has exactly the wrong attitude and has embarrassed CAA through it. Think of him. I'm sorry, I have trouble developing any empathy. As I say, if there are death threats, I do not condone that. I would strongly, and they said, we're thinking of getting the police involved. Well, to that I'd say, get the police involved. Nobody should be the subject of death threats. Get the police involved. Because I certainly haven't encouraged people to make death threats. I've done exactly the opposite. I've said, don't contact the investigators. If someone has made a death threat, it's nothing to do with me and I do not condone it. But if you're going to threaten to get the police involved, CAA, is it bullying? I don't know. You tell me. It's not good enough. Absolutely not good enough. So that's where I stand at the moment. Keeping you up to date with this thing. This is going absolutely ridiculous. If CAA just did their damn job properly with an objective perspective and common sense, we wouldn't be having this conversation. But where do we go from here? That's a very important thing. What happens next? Well, I'm telling you now. I've already offered CAA to get together. Let's have a bit of a chat. Let's put a face to the the organization, get someone in front of camera, let's discuss some of the issues, let's see what your position is, why you're doing these things, explain your position, try and earn back some respect from the community, and what do I get? Crickets chirping. Not interested, no, come back at all. I'm going to make the same offer again, because I know they'll be watching this video, because only an idiot wouldn't be keeping a very close eye on the videos I make if they were in CAA. So let's assume they're not that stupid, they're going to watch the video, here we go CAA, Send someone down here to Tokara. We'll get down to Robert Harris. We'll have a couple of gallons of coffee, sit around for a few hours. Let's work out how we can recover your position, earn you the respect of the community that you're supposed to be regulating, how we can come up with ways to ensure that people are safe and the skies are safe and that aviation is safe in the era of the drone. And, and enable me to go back to all these people that are issuing death threats and making your life a misery and say to them, CAA are doing the right thing. Let's support CAA, because I would love to say that. I'd so much love to say that. We're singing from the same hymn book here. We're, we're, we're all in favor of aviation safety. You have your way, which is to throw rules at people. My way is to educate them. Um, rules, <laughs> rules do not guarantee safety. And, and let's face it, if rules were an effective way to prevent bad things happening, there'd be no robberies, there'd be no rapes, there'd be no murders, there'd be no speeding on the motorways, would there? Because all those things are against the rules. In fact, they're against laws, but people still do them. The only, and this is the thing, culture of safety is a big thing. The only way to make sure that things are safe is to develop a culture of safety. And a culture of safety comes from understanding risks, understanding why you shouldn't do something, understanding the gear you're using, understanding what it can do, what it can't do, and having a full appreciation of how to observe, manage, spot the risks, manage them, and mitigate them wherever possible, and to make decisions based on the golden rules that I believe are important. Never endanger people, never endanger property. Those two things are only rules you need. In Canada, they're the only rules that apply to sub 250 gram models and drones. And you know what? Since those rules were passed, there has not been one incident of injury or property damage relating to the use of sub 250 gram drones. Those rules are proven, proven to be totally effective. But instead, CAA wants to Make it illegal for a 67-year-old man to fly a child's toy in his garden. Think about it, CAA. I'm not making you look stupid. You're making yourselves look stupid. To fix that. Come to me. Let's sit down. Let's come up with a, a strategy and a way to turn that around. Because I want you to be respected for your good attitudes and your good rules and regulations and policies. But if they're not good, there's nothing I can do. Here we go. Thank you, CAA, for watching this. Thank you to all my viewers. Go to the comedy bit, tell me what you think. Am I doing the right thing? I've had so much support. I'm so blessed to have people who actually do support this. And even those that can't actually publicly come out because they've got too much to lose, the quiet behind the scenes support you give me, much appreciated. I'll do my best for you. That's all I can do is my best. Thanks for watching, guys. Time for me to get back to work. And hopefully I'll get some sleep eventually. <laughs> Bye for now. Sorry if I've been a bit incoherent. Lack of sleep does that. Bye for now.